So the next step is to make this interface right here. And as I said earlier, we're going to add this interface inside the domain service. So I add a new file right here and instead of a class, you have to pick interface. So let's just make the interface right here and let's call it customer repository. And actually, when you make interfaces, it's .NET standard that we put an I in front of it to kind of explain that this is an interface. Let me just try and create this guy and explain the different names right here. So you have the I in front of it, and that makes me as a developer aware that this is an interface. Pretty much meaning that I cannot just do a new keyword in front of an interface. It's an I customer, meaning that this is probably something to do with storing, working with customers, right? And it's a repository. That pretty much means that it's the repository pattern we've used right here. Again, it's, again, when you know the the, the words from the software environment, it makes sense. Okay, this one is public and interfaces are because I wanna be able to use this anywhere also outside of this project right here. So that's why it's a public interface. Good. Next we do is we kind of need to figure out what we wanna implement in this interface. Now notice, let's just grab these create, read, update, delete. Let's just actually grab everything here and put it into our customer repo right here. Now, first let's figure out how do we create data? Well, to create data, I need to make some kind of function that can create data. But again, this is an interface, so I'm not going to actually implement or create how we actually make a new customer in a data source. I'm actually going to instead just explain, I'm going to create something, right? And I'm going to create something and I need to send in the customer that I want to create right here. Right, so this is pretty much how I can explain it. Now there are a few things we can do here. First of all, of course, we need to import the customer or else it doesn't know what a customer is. So we get that again from this package right here. So now we have the customer and again, control or command dot, depending on your setup with your shortcut keys. So now we have the customer right here. He sent in and when I'm done, I've just created the data, right? But I think, a good way of doing this is pretty much sending the customer back. So you have him as a return statement right here. The reason is that normally when you create a customer, he comes in without an ID. So remember when you send in the customer, he'll probably, he, he won't have an ID, no ID when enter, but he will have an ID when he exits, right? So a lot of times I think um, that is pretty nice to kind of return the customer after he's been created, even though the only thing that happens is he gets a new ID. Now again, it's up to you. You can also just return void right here to say you don't want to return the customer when he's done. We also need to somehow be able to read data. Now the easiest thing we can read is a single customer, right? So we can say customer and we'll say read by ID. Just to explain that we're going to read this customer. By the way, my B key doesn't work all the time, so you'll have to live with that. And we'll pass in an ID, and then hopefully we'll get a customer back. Notice how simple that is. Again, I don't do the implementation, I just explain the contract. The next thing I'll do is I'll also add one that can read all customers. Now let's just start out by putting all these customers inside a list, which is a generic guy that we already used, the static list that we used in the last series. And again, let's just import this collection generic because that's the namespace that the list is coming from. So I can actually see right here, this is from system collection. So this is a Microsoft class right here that they made for me. Sweet. And let's just say, how do we do that? Well, let's just call it read all. That's just meaning that you have to implement something if you want to use my interface called read all so you can get all customers back. We also have an update. How do we update a customer? Well, again, it's up to you, but I'm going to return the customer after he's updated. Not going to cost me anything, so I'll just do that. And then I'm going to pass in a customer containing all the information. So this is the customer update, right? So this is going to be the customer that I pass in from the outside, and then at some point when it's done updating the data source, it's going to return that updated customer for me. The last thing that I wanna do is I wanna be able to delete a customer. And again, I'm just going to do it like this. I'm going to say pass in an integer value with the customer that you wanna delete, the ID of the guy, and then you are golden. That's all I had to do. Now I actually have a customer repository ready to use. Pretty much meaning that the interface, the contract is ready to use. So I can actually work, I can keep working now with my application right here. And I can actually also, right now if I wanted to, I could move my code down to the infrastructure and start adding the static list that we had earlier or some kind of fake database. Let's actually try and do that in the next lesson so you guys can see us using this customer repository right here. See you next time, have fun.